But here now he is representing the Geological Society of India, the publisher of Landslide Atlas of Kerala. I would like to invite Professor Sri Vikramaji KP to know what prompted the society to publish the book Landslide Atlas of Kerala. I welcome you, sir. Thank you all. Thank you for identifying me as a rep of uh, the Geological Society of India, one of the premier uh, pioneer organizations of few science professionals and academics in the country, founded in 1958. And uh, the first uh, president of the <coughs> Geological Society of India was uh, Dr. B. N. Varya, FRS, probably the only geologist who was uh, decorated with the fellowship of the Royal Society in the country. Then uh, the, there is a great man who was the editor, Professor L. Ram Rao, a known paleontologist. But in 1958, this Geological Society of India was inaugurated in New Delhi by K. D. Malavia, then Minister for Petroleum, Minerals, and Minerals. Now, you know, different names are there for, the ministry, for that ministry. So, that is how it all originated. The first uh, publication occurred in 1959 in a journal. If I remember, uh, I remember the appearance, it is still in our library in the old volumes. It was then called the Bulletin of the Geological Society of India, which was actually half of the Air Force Ice sheet. And uh, four issues were there every year. This was replaced later on in the early 60s with the introduction of the Journal of the Geological Society of India and that was only one volume once a year. Soon it was uh, translated to or uh, upscale to two volumes or uh, two numbers of one volume every year. Then it became a quarterly journal and finally it is a month, two volume journal in every year. So the, this journal, the growth of the journal is also an indicator of how effectively and diligently the geoscience community is looking for answers, looking for new knowledge and trying to spread the new knowledge not only in India among Indian geologists but also to the world society or community of geologists. So Geological Society of India <coughs> When you talk about it, this society has over 2,500 members. When I say 2,500, it is not 3,000, but 2, 5, 4, 8 or something like that, something of that order. And uh, it is from their site, Geological Society of India site. Only sad thing I found was, there is uh, at least 5,000 geologists actively engaged in geological work in the private sector, government sector, academics, etc. In, in our nation. But most of the people are not directly supporting the society by taking a membership. I happen to be a life member, that is a history, and uh, the Geological Society publishes the journal, special publications, test book series. The first test book, perhaps published by the Geological Society, is Geology of Kerala. And it was prepared by Dr. K. Swoman, who used to be in the Center for Earth Science Studies. Then, of course, a series of books, every state was uh, addressed, the geology was addressed by a distinguished geologist in printed form, book form which was actually, which is currently sold by the Geological Society. Secondly, memoirs are published by the Geological Society. Special papers are published, set of papers are published by the Geological Society. Dr. Vinayan right here, along with the later paper I came across on uh, groundwater or whatever in India, Vinayan wrote it with uh, his senior colleague and it was published as a special publication. I think there are something like 17 papers about uh, the groundwater condition, different facets of groundwater condition in different parts of India, but the main focus was Karnataka. 
and uh, Dr. Vinayan and his co-author, they wrote about the groundwater condition in Lakshadweep. So, in addition to that, when I stand here, when I look at it, I cannot but look at the gallery of portraits. I am there, but there is a man, K.K. Menon. He was, once upon a time, a member of the Council of the Geological Society of India. Not a foundation member. He was a foundation member of the Mineralogical Society of India. Most of us know here, at least the senior people, we have a Geological Society, the premier professional organization. Then we have a Mineralogical Society of India. Then we have a Sedimentological Society of India. Not at all healthy. <coughs> Then we have a mining and metallurgical society of India and uh, engineering, geology, or geotechnic society like that. Of even all these, the geological society of India is robust because of its presence, because of its reach. And it was a very welcome thing that uh, Dr. Uman and Dr. Sajid Kumar decided to bring out this atlas through the Geological Society of India. And it's a wonderful contribution. In other words, one of the goals, destinations in mind of any researcher is to finally come out with at least one book out of his own experience, research experience, findings. And they have achieved this at a very young age. Absolutely, it is envious to me and I congratulate them heartily for this wonderful work. In addition to this, on the part of the Geological Society, what uh, the Geological Society intends is to take this message in the pages of the Atlas to the public, to the public in the sense, for example, Kerala is a long uh, strip of, uh, it is like a red chili shaped uh, state. We have the mountains which is only 120 kilometers from the, the widest part from the seashore. And 48% uh, 40 of the Kerala state falls under the highland, which is 75 per meter or more in elevation. And 7.5 uh, to 75 meters is the midland, which will be either 41% or 48% it is available in literature. But what I mean to say is, one, Kerala is set like this between the ocean on the west and the mountains on the east. And the distance is only 120 kilometers. Number two, perhaps Kerala's western ghats and the lower elevations of the western ghats is perhaps the most densely populated portion or cultivated portion of any mountain belt. Thirdly, we have a huge population residing there. Fourthly, we along with Assam, the northeast, are the only two places in the country where we have this so-called Mon tropical monsoon climate. Don't go, don't keep it there. Most people don't know, but the fact of the matter is this kind of rain is not available anywhere else in India. Only in the northeastern part of India, tropical monsoon climate. The rest of it is 53% of the Indian continent enjoys semi-arid climate and arid climate. Rajasthan and the rest of the also contributes to this. So, the type of climate we are here is actually triggering this landslip or landslide. Then, a bit about how the landslide study started. My late colleague, Professor Krishna Nath, had a project in 1983-86, funded by the Ministry of Environment. He perhaps was the only academic in the state of Kerala who addressed the slope instability in the Midland region are along the foothills of Kerala, are the Western Ghats. Then uh, the, he had, a, of course, WLA, you know, concluded a study, there was a PhD about this project, etc. <coughs> then another thing I would uh, want to mention is perhaps South 